Welcome to Business Smarts Radio with Tom and Dr. Dane, the clean approach to building your successful business. Now, let's introduce Tom Borg and Dr. Dave Miles. Welcome to Business Smarts Radio with Tom and Dr. Dave, where we bring you the clean approach to building your successful business. And by we, when we mean clean, we're not talking about spick and span and dust bombs, although right now spick and span is a little tough to get a hold of at the store. We're talking about this podcast is all about clean, the clean approach to building your successful business. By clean, we mean communication, leadership, engagement. And no drama. And no drama. Absolutely. So today we're going to be talking about how to pivot your business during unsettled times and really be able to sustain and build it for the future. So Tom, tell us about some of the first things that we ought to be doing. Well, one of the first things I think we need to do is pay attention to one of the quotes from Eric Plasker, Dr. Eric Plasker. He said, we don't really fear change, but rather the uncertainty of how to deal with that change. And so it is with this business of COVID-19. I don't think we fear COVID-19 as much as we fear how we're going to cope with it, how we're going to work from home, how we're going to handle all the bills that might be coming in with that interrupted cash flow, how we're going to pay our employees. These are some of the things I believe that our listeners are going to deal with in a way that's going to allow them to be able to get through this successfully. So that's one of the things we need to work with. Now, some of the things I've got on my list here today in the first part of our broadcast that can help us cope, three tips from Mr. Dale Carnegie. First one, keep busy. Now's the time to get focused and to get busy on what we're doing. No, I would definitely agree with that. And there's a lot of people that are out there talking about now to make sure that if you have the time to now is a good time Mm -hmm. to start working, you know, Uh, on your business if you can't work in your business depending on you know what type of business that you are and if you're at home a lot of times this is the time that you hey i'd love to be able to get to this or be able to do this project to be able to do xyz if i ever had the time well if you have the time now time to start like i said doing that project reading uh, writing that book being able to come up with that new product or that new service or then that new course that you weren't able to devote the time to before because you were running around so busy so that's one silver lining to uh, the extra time if possible. Absolutely. And we're going to talk about some other ideas that they can do with this extra time that they've got to improve their business and to improve themselves, definitely. Second yeah. idea for us all here is to use the law of percentages to eliminate your worries. Now, that's another one from Dale Carnegie. He said that 92% of the worries that we have are of things that will never amount to anything or will never happen. So that's 92% of the things we worry about have already happened or if they do happen, nothing big came from it. So keep that perspective in mind. If we do some basic things right now, stay smart, stay safe, you know, be prudent about how you uh, carry on in your everyday life, working from home. If you have to go out, okay, be safe, be cautious there. So these are some basic things. Third one I want to mention here is decide how much a thing may be worth and refuse to give it more. That's the third rule from Mr. Dale Carnegie. So, okay, here we are, 2020, April, whatever it is, April 18th that we're making this uh, program. Why don't we get serious about understanding the law of averages and realize that we just have to stay focused and move forward. And I think we'll find ourselves uh, staying away from all this worry and just focusing on what we can do productively right now. And I would agree with that. One of the things that you talked about before was, I mean, this, this thing obviously had a beginning. It's going to have a middle and we may be there. It's going to have an end to it. And at some point we're going to be coming out of this. We're going to be you know, reopening the economy. We're going to be reopening society in general slowly and cautiously. And the nice part is that, you know, hopefully people will you know, adhere to the guidelines that would come out because everywhere is a little bit different. I mean, where you're at, if you're in the Washington, D.C., New York City, Boston, you know, really highly dense area, you know, how that comes about is going to be a little bit different than being in a, a smaller town or a, a more spread out, less dense community. You, know, uh, you, you look at some of the curves that you've seen that, that are out there. You look at New, York, New Jersey versus L.A. just because of the sprawl. I mean, it's, you don't have the mm-hmm. density in the concentration, even though you still have the, the people there. So a lot of that's going to be different everywhere you're at. But the nice part about it is at some point, if you can survive the initial, we've got to close down, 
you've got to do things differently depending on it's even the essential businesses look at the places like costco have they have adapted and a lot of the restaurants mm -hmm. and going to delivery and going to carry out and special supermarkets absolutely and how they've had to adapt and some have done really well we have a local pizza mm -hmm. shop here that okay they still do takeout but what can we do to keep our sales good even though we can't really there's a lot of people that want to come and dine in well they started creating pizza kits like to take home and actually make the pizza at home with the kids. And so it's, it makes it into a fun activity. Right. You can go buy the pizza kit and you could take it home. You can get it, carry out, drive through, that type of thing. Take it home and be able to do that with the kids, which has been a big success with them. Uh, there's also been That's a bread a company. Point, yeah, there's been a bread company that I thought was interesting where you could, um, I think it's Great Harvest, where you could basically make a donation and purchase the bread and then they donate it to a nonprofit. So, you know, it still helps keep them in business. Mm -hmm. The nonprofit still is able to benefit from it. So it just works real well for everybody. So it's just that's right. Hard that you well, have talk to you about that, David. Business. Absolutely. And talking all on that same line. So we want to talk about the four A's to how we do uh, deal with this whole COVID-19. And uh, we want to go to Dr. Uh, or Mr. Kopp Kopmeyer. He came up with something called the four A's to dealing with change. And right. if you think about it, that's exactly what we're going through with this covid so here's, I want to share these four A's with you. First one is A, admit that it is happening. Okay, admit that this thing is real. And in this case, it's not going to go away by itself. And that's what's important. That's the first A. The second A is to accept it. And that is, it's happening. To take responsibility for what you can personally and professionally do. That's the second A. The right. third A is adapt. That is come up with a plan. Uh, what, what are you going to do to keep your family safe? What are you going to do to keep your company or your business moving uh, what can you do now so come up with a plan that's important uh, and some people are looking at how they can grow their business at this time for the future and we'll talk about that in a little bit and the last one is action that is schedule activities and take action to move your business forward so just don't come up with a plan and sit on it but say okay here's what the steps are going to be let's schedule those steps in and let's start taking action to make this thing work for us no, I would agree thoughts? with that. And, and I like the I like how they cut Meyer puts all of this too, because like I said, it's not going away by itself. It goes away when that's why they put the 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 quarantines, the lockdowns, the social distancing guidelines, the uh hygiene guidelines. Mm -hmm. and they put all these things. That's what makes stuff go away. And like you said, admit that it's happening, take responsibility for what you can do. Staying at home, uh making sure that you're more than six feet away from people, making sure that you're you're doing you're adhering to the guidelines. That's the big deal. Is right. adhering That's to the right. guidelines. And I, I also want to throw out there, you know, when there are people that have to go out and there are people that have to go to work and there are people that have to do different things. And just because you don't see somebody in a uniform doesn't mean they're not going to work or they're going somewhere to get something sent, you know, for food or essentials or something. So That's I don't right. think we want to get so wrapped up into everything that we want to get into a society that it, you know wants to rat out everybody because oh i saw him get in his car and go somewhere and he's supposed to be at home well you don't you don't mm -hmm. know all this. a lot of times just in general we don't know all the circumstances for everybody so uh so that's right find out first but you're right come up with a plan and maybe that adaptation that plan is um beyond the working from home or social distancing you know what do we do you know is there the the idle loans or the uh, from SBA or the PPP loans. And, and at this particular time of the recording, they've stopped taking a lot of the applications because yeah. you know, they've, they've shut all those down, but yeah, what, and then what can you do um, to basically sustain and preserve what you have and, and those mm -hmm. things are a part of it. But then, you know, what can you do as far as just like some of these other restaurants and these other businesses have really adapted and, you know, hopefully thriving during this, or at least able to keep the doors open. That's the big thing. But how can they take sure. the, the things that they're using right now to stay open and keep their people employed? How can they take that moving forward when we do reopen? And now it's just a new way of doing business That's right. that can make them, uh, you know, can work even better for them. Absolutely. Dave, we're going to look in the future here for a moment. And there's going to be a lot of things that will be different as a result of this whole experience. And I believe there'll be businesses that'll be smarter. 
they'll be more efficient when this thing is over with, and eventually they'll be more profitable. So there are a lot of good things that will come from this. We just don't know them all yet. But I think like everything else, if we look at it with the right set of lenses, we'll see some good things that can come if we're wise and we use our heads and implement some of these strategies once we're through this whole thing. And I would agree with that because I think so, if you think about from even from the 9-11 standpoint, and you think about the mm -hmm. new normal, if you, if you ask somebody in 1998, do you ever think yeah. somebody would say, yeah, I'm going to, I'm perfectly cool with taking my shoes off before I go on an airline? They would have looked at you mm. like you were crazy. They, they, nobody, That's right. nobody in this world is going to be, I'm not taking my belt off and my shoes off before I get on the airplane. You've lost your mind. But what do we do every day before all this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't even, the, TSA so and the things that come from that. Yeah, don't even think twice. I mean, everything's in a, all of our you know, stuff's in a small bottle. You know, we've got, we mm -hmm. issues. it just ends up being how it is. I mean, and I think a lot of managers, a lot, a lot of leaders were not, big on remote work and they've seen with a lot of millennials a lot of gen z's and even a lot of gen xers that it's oh, really, yeah. yeah that's a big thing is doing the, is the remote work and that's just it really helps with the work-life balance part of it and really being you know enjoy the the job now granted this is a little bit on the uh, extreme part of that but you know there's some people that didn't want to let go of that you know maybe they just uh, mm -hmm. that micromanaging tendency or whatever but now look at it is they're having to do it they're having to figure out strategies mm -hmm. to work. And at that point, you're like, well, when things go back to quote unquote normal, maybe that's something that is a lot more, you know, we get more efficient and effective because what are the things that we can meet virtually? And what are the things that we really do need to be in person for? Exactly. Exactly. Well, here's a couple more things I want to cover with our listeners today. Sure. The first one here is keep informed. So, what we're meaning by that, and during this time, time of this recording here, late April, uh, it's important to keep informed, but don't be overwhelmed by the news media. I mean, you don't want to be glued to the to the to your laptop all day long or your iPad. Get the news, get what you need to know, the updates, but then get back to work. Get focused on something productive. That's critical, I believe. Next on the list is, if you're going to get information, go to sources you can trust. You're not going to see the greatest and latest and most valid information on Facebook, okay? People may mean well, but they are not necessarily putting out the accurate information. So make sure you go to the right sources. Uh, next, eight. Remember, when stuff happens, that's the way the world's always been. Right now, we're having some real big stuff that's happening, and that's one of those things we have to understand that we're going to need to take this whole thing seriously and then make some adjustments accordingly. That's very much a part of that. And here's another big one, Dave. I think our listeners need to tune into is if you're a business owner, if you're a manager or you're a president, you are going to have to set the example by the way you do the things you're asking your people to do. If you're asking them to be smart and to be safe, you need to be practicing that as well. Don't flaunt these guidelines that are put forth because it's your actions speak a lot louder than your words. I know well, one of my would, right now doing yeah, an that is job it, of that. He's, he's giving that, that image right out there. Go ahead. Oh, one of my saying, clients, he's uh, practicing oh, what he preaches. Clients. He's sharing with his, his – every week they do a, a webinar and uh, where they're just educating everybody on what's going on with the company, how everybody's working from home, what's happening. But he's, he's telling them, here's what I'm doing to stay safe and to stay smart with my family. So he's actually practicing what he's preaching. Go ahead. Nice. Well, and I honestly think that's something that a good leader should be doing all the time. Uh, this is just a, you know – a particularly important time to do that because I mean, really anybody can, you know, keep the, keep the ship sailing in the same direction in smooth seas. You know, when you have uh, right. times of crisis is when you really need strong leadership and, you know, just to, to maintain a status quo when things are going well or fine, but you, know, you really should model the behavior you want other people to do. You should be the example and be that kind of servant leader all the time. And, and the authenticity part of it is so important. Uh, I love that quote that um, Craig Rochelle talks about on his podcast all the time and his leadership podcast. He talks about, you know, people would rather work for somebody who's real than somebody who's always right. Mm -hmm. And being yeah. always real makes, you can be wrong and you can I make like mistakes, that. but you're real. You don't have to be always right. 
That's right. And That's they will exactly give, and your employees right. will give you some grace, but the, but when you tell them to do one thing and you're doing something else, you totally destroy that organizational trust and you destroy that credibility. So what else do you have? Absolutely. Right on the same mark with that, we need to be a good human being. And that is don't discredit or blame others for the misfortune we're all experiencing. You know, it's easy to point fingers in a time of crisis, but what real leaders do is focus on what can we do to get out of this? What can we do to work together to come up with a solution? So that's critical. So that would be the end of that section. Next thing I'd like to focus on here with our listeners today is focusing on your team. What can you do with your company employees right now, your team members, your managers? So here are a couple of tips. First, in the research conducted by Daniel Coyle, your employee wants three things from the business or organization they work for. They want to feel safe. Mm -hmm. Number two, they want to feel connected. And number three, they want to share in a future. So what we're saying is, what can you do with your business right now, with your team members, with your employees, to make sure you're delivering in all three of those? What are your thoughts on that, Dave? Well, looking at, I mean, those, you can't get more poignant right now than from, from Daniel Kuhl's research on that. I mean, to feel safe, obviously, you're not going to feel safe if you're in an environment where you think, hey, am I going to you know, be susceptible to catching something or, or spreading something mm -hmm. that, unintentionally? I mean, so as part of the whole social distancing and working from home and all, all this, this quarantine is the, yes. the physical feeling safe physically. On that, mm -hmm. you know, being able to kind of keep your business afloat uh, to the best of your ability to keep open and, and being in business and keeping the lights on. Because a lot of people, I, I hate seeing people shaming somebody for selling or shaming someone for trying to stay in business right now. Because, and I've seen a few examples of it. And because a lot of times they're just, we're trying to keep the doors open, trying to keep the lights on to be able to keep the employees sure. paid. I mean, and that helps how better to have your employee feel safe when they're continuing to get a paycheck. And most right. not just physical yeah, safety, that economic safety as well. Cause a lot of businesses don't have six months or eight months or 12 months worth of just operating capital where you could go for nine months with absolutely zero income and be able to fully mm -hmm. pay your fixed expenses, your employees and just don't um, feeling connected. Oh. Couldn't get much more pointed about, right now than feeling connected because people are so isolated. Simple things That's like just right. up the phone and just mm -hmm. a simple phone call. Hey, how are you doing? How are things going? Mm -hmm. Are you doing okay? Just I agree. Check in on you. Just on a person to person level is huge. Um, it doesn't have to be much. A text message, hey, I'm thinking about you. How are things going? An email, a phone call, just something to kind of check in on your team. Plus, you know, getting together on a regular basis. I think that as far as feeling connected, as far and as far as virtual type of meetings, mm -hmm. I was really impressed with a video that I saw recently from Simon Sinek, and it, his whole business is speaking. His whole business is getting in front of people, but he has a virtual team that he's had for years, and they gave an example of how their team meeting goes every month, or excuse me, I think every week. Mm -hmm. But that was a really great example, if you've never had to do this, of how they have a, a very distinct structure to build the team and to be able to be effective. And I thought that was fantastic. So I would look that up on YouTube. That's a great example. And then the last one, to share wow. a future. Well, you got to be able to, I mean, you have to know that there's a future, especially for the company. Are you still going to be in business? Are you still going to be open? What can we do to make sure mm -hmm. that we're there? And, and we're, you know, the job that you're doing may not be the same. Like for example, in a restaurant, if you're doing a lot of delivery and a lot of carry out and a lot of mm. you know, takeout stuff, that's not the same as, coming up there with a the little, uh, you know, with the book saying, hey, hey, you know, hi, my name is John. You know, I'll be your server today. How can, what can I get for you? I mean, that's a different, mm -hmm. different skill set. It's still a job, but the job just is changed. It's a little mm -hmm. bit different. So to be able to share that future of keeping open and keeping in business, you know, there are some things that may have to uh, be a little bit different, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And hitchhiking, which said, now is the time to communicate regularly with your employees and however you're going to do that, whether through weekly po podcasts or phone calls, whatever it might be, but do that. Now is the time for them to hear from us. Yeah. Next, you got to reassure them that you have a strategy in place for paying them. Okay. That's important. They want to know, are we going to get a paycheck or how much is of a cut do we have to take right now? Are you taking a pay cut? If you don't, that's important point there. If you're yeah. going to ask your employees to take a pay cut, you better tell them, hey, I'm going to be taking a pay cut as well. 
just to yeah. show that everybody's going to share in this together which makes common sense if you're thinking uh, uncommonly at this time. You take one uh, last first thing here is, uh, take, if you take one first and you take a bigger one, that really is, I think, the way to, to show the leadership is, uh, hey, look, I'm going to take the biggest cut and I'm going to take the cut first. And then if you have to lay people mm -hmm. off, honestly, sometimes it's just better you know, uh, to be able to lay them off and they can get the enhanced unemployment right now than just trying to trickle that's it's right. It, it, it just depends. There's so many people that have had to do layoffs. It's not even funny. But what are some ways that you were talking about, uh, you know, communicate regularly? What are some of the ideas that you've had? Because I know you mentioned one earlier before we started the broadcast that I thought was pretty, uh, uh -huh. pretty interesting. You're number five on your list here. Yes. So the idea of um, how about having a, a weekly happy hour with your team, a virtual weekly happy hour. So everybody gets on whichever uh, platform you're using, get your favorite drink of choice, and then no business. Don't talk about any business. It's just socializing. It's a chance for people to get together and talk, have some laughs, maybe introduce some of their family members, their dogs, whatever they want to bring into the picture there. But this is a great way to keep people's spirits up, letting them know that they're still connected, and that bringing this humor back into the, the workplace in a way where you know, people like to laugh. It makes them feel good. It makes them feel connected. So if we can do that with our employees, with our team members on a weekly basis, hey, that's just one more way of keeping those people connected to the organization and feeling like they're bonded and that they're, gonna, that they're part of something that's going to outlast this experience we're all going through right now. True. I was going to say thoughts? we're kind of joke about um, you know, the water cooler and how you know, there's so much – you know, office talk guys. So, you know, just socializing that happens around a coffee pot or a water cooler or something like that. Mm -hmm. but, you know, and we're missing out on that social aspect of not being together because uh, there's some introverts mm -hmm. that are, and I'm being facetious when I say this, but there's some introverts that are probably like, yes, I don't have to be around people, but there's a lot of extroverts that are just dying inside right now. And they're like, I need to be around people. Right. And so having that little bit of a social Event and find out from your chamber. Are they doing local mixers online now? I mean, there's you know our yes. people at chamber of commerce is starting to do a lot of their stuff and get almost everything they have back up and going online. And to see some of the smiles on people's faces, just to be able to connect with folks online is, I think, a really good thing. I know all the, for example, all the Toastmasters group, all the Toastmasters clubs, they've all had to to go mm -hmm. online. And I would probably yeah. this day and age, I would recommend probably looking at that because of one thing is forcing everybody to build a skill set that we typically don't have which was being really good at being able to be on an online platform whether it's like it zoom or microsoft right. or skype or wh whatever platform you use go to meeting webex and that's a skill mm -hmm. set and be able to give a presentation to a board or a group that typically you would do in person which is a separate skill set and be able to do that effectively online why not do something that kind of stretches you a little bit? Because we're here now. I don't think the online meetings are going to go away anytime soon. So why not try to build that skill no, set the anything, best you can? And if anything, Dave, this is going to shove us forward to get our ratchet up our skills and to develop our, our equipment. You know, if it means purchasing a new headset or it's getting uh, your bandwidth expanded, uh, uh, any of these things, I think uh, we're going to be uh, wiser to, to – get moving now rather than having to be uh, left behind with everyone else moving into this platform experience that we're all advancing at this time. Very true. And one last so. recommendation I would throw out to people is uh, mm -hmm. go on to the world's second largest search engine, which is YouTube, and just start uh -huh. some of the just small three to five minute videos that are out there on how to look your best yeah. and do your best at Zoom. Because we've all... If, if you're in the professional business realm, I'll put it this way. Most of us have, you know, picked up either by design or by default, you know, certain norms that are acceptable in professional business, you know, look acceptable. I mean, comb your hair, take a shower, scrape your face. I mean, just silly stuff. I mean, we, we mm -hmm. joke about that all the time. We don't even think about it because it's so natural to come dress professional in a professional business environment, depending on where you're at. Mm -hmm. But they don't, a lot of times we don't realize that when we're there at home, how can we translate that to looking and sounding our best on a virtual platform, just like we would around a conference room? That's right. Yeah. That's an important thing to do. And there's tips on how to do that. 
Yeah, yeah. There's, there's tons of videos that are out there now that are on it, and I would recommend you know, pick up two or three. Pick up a you pick up a hint from here, a tip from there, a strategy from there. Little mm -hmm. things that you can do. It doesn't take much. One gentleman talked about taking his laptop and just setting it up on top of a box of Top Ramen, so the camera is facing him, not mm -hmm. facing up, looking at yes. Him. So just silly things, just little stuff that doesn't really even involve any money that you can do. Uh, some people are even using their they say, I don't have the money for an expensive webcam or I, versus what I have up there. Well, they're using their phone. They're able to take their yeah. phone and actually use their and download an app and be able to use their phone as a webcam instead of, you know, if they, they're all sold out or something like that. You know, they're like, hey, you got a great uh -huh. webcam here on your phone. So there's lots of cool things, I think, that can kind of force you to be a little bit more innovative and uh, you know, say, just kind of up the game a little bit. If, if we're going to be here for a while, you might as well – get used to it and get better at it. Absolutely. Those are wise words, Dave. And I'll tell you, uh, it's so true. I've been on a couple of calls recently where uh, there's a large group of people and yeah, they need to do something about their backgrounds in terms of what people are seeing. Uh, you just can't uh, expect that it's, it's okay to just let it all hang out. No, this is not the time for that to happen. You got to sharpen your professional image as you project yourself. So, Dave, okay. at this point, uh, we, we probably should summarize what we want to talk about today because I know there's lots more information. We'll, we can cover that in our next episode. But sure, why don't we summarize what we've talked about here today? Okay. Okay, well, so what we've talked about. Go for it. Go ahead. All right. So what we tried to share with our listeners here today is that, you know, first things first, and that is uh, we got to learn how to cope with this whole thing. It is going to have a middle it's going to have a beginning, a middle, and an end, as Dave mentioned earlier. And that's important to realize. We're going to get through this. But at the same time, you got to understand the four A's. That is, admit that it's happening, accept it, adapt. That is, get a plan, and then take some action. That's going to move you forward. It's going to help you make the best of this whole experience. Second on the list there is that we need to be able to work with our, our people. We need to communicate with them, let them know that we're here for them, uh, really allow them to feel connected, to feel safe, to feel that they're part of a company that's got a future. So this is important that we do that with our, with our teams. And at the same time, we need to be able to just be aware that uh, this is something we need to uh, get better at doing. We need to just get better at running our businesses the best we can right now and to adapt it in any way, shape, or form to meet the needs of our, our clients and certainly to meet the needs of our employees as well. Absolutely. And like I said, there's, um, I like the idea of like, so communicating regularly with your people, like I said, doing something to bring yes. in some kind of an enhanced, like you said, that uh, virtual happy hour to have some kind of, you know, enhancing the social environment, just, getting together and communicating on that, being real and being open with your employees, you know, communicating with yes. them maybe more than you would before. Um, and just yes, remember that, that leaders lead through crisis. Leaders, it doesn't take a tremendous amount of leadership ability or communication skills to be able to just keep good times going or to steady keel when, you know, like I said, calm winds and, and smooth seas. It's, you know, you takes the uh, experienced captain to be able to keep the ship in the right direction when you have these types of storms coming. So this is really where you want to make sure that your leadership and communication skills are as, as good as they can be, that you're communicating properly with your team, that you know how best to communicate properly with the team. If you don't know that, that may be something to sharpen those skills during this time because it may have been a great time to do that before, but you know, there's not a time that I can think of that would be more important to be able to work very seamlessly and congruently with your team and to be able to communicate the best when you can't just go talk to them down the hallway. And it's, so there's a lot of challenges. So knowing how best to communicate with people is always, is a tough one. So one of the things that we do have is I stumbled across a resource through TTI about a working from home assessment, which that's something that yes, great free assessment. assessment. They just redesigned it a couple of days before mm -hmm. this recording. Uh, so I know all the people that I sent out to that had done it. I'm going to re try to resend that to people and and send out the links again because mm -hmm. it's a really good way of getting an idea. And those that's just one example of a resource that's free that's out yeah. there that you can. And, Dave, and we, if there are listeners who would like to get access to that contact Dave or myself. We'll send you a link. You get this 
I believe it's a six-page version now, where you'll get back this report on how what your style is and how you can best communicate with other people, other styles, and they'll outline them for you uh, right. online. So it's a powerful tool, and it's free. Are, it's free. We're offering it free right now. And what I like about it is that it, it actually before it would tell you t- tips, hints, and suggestions on exactly some things that would help you work more efficiently at home, but it really wouldn't tell you about your behavioral or communication style. Uh, mm-hmm. And it really, it was yes. kind of a little tougher to read as far as others. It was, it was still a good resource, but now they've really tuned it up. And I think it's um, a fantastic resource, but that's just an example of there's a lot of free resources that are out there that you can, that you can get, that you can um, do things for. So make sure that you keep in touch with your customers, keep in touch with your team, you know, make sure to, um, uh-huh. You know, let people know how, how you can serve. There's a lot of great causes out there that you can support right now. There's a lot of nonprofits that if you think about it, I, I, my heart bleeds for a lot of these nonprofits because a lot of their fundraisers involved events. Yes. Where people gathered. And guess what we're not doing now? Mm-hmm. So we're not mm-hmm. gathering. So guess what's happened to the fundraising? And so there's a lot of ones that are hurting right now. So anything you can do to support some of your local nonprofits and support your local businesses, that's a big one. I mean, there's, right. I mean, there's a lot of things you have to get from big businesses, but anywhere you can shop local, support local businesses, it's a huge thing. So please check with your local chamber of commerce, check with your local business association, your EDA, find out how you can support local businesses in your community. That's, a, that's huge. And beyond that, any parting words for our uh, listeners today, Tom? Uh, Dave, I just say this: uh, be smart, stay safe, and stay strong. That sounds great. Well, thank you for tuning in to Business Smarts Radio, where we bring you the clean approach to building your successful business. And like we always say, the podcast is all about the clean. The acronym: We're all about communication, leadership, engagement, and no drama. And no drama. There's more than enough of that out there. We don't need to bring it in here. So you all have a great rest of your day, and we will see you on the next episode. Thanks. Thanks.